This is a pair of Dior Jordan 4s we painted inspired by the Jordan 1s. They look like they would be relatively simple to make, right? It's a design primarily made up of basic color blocking along with one designer print panel. But what if I told you these took me twice as long as it usually takes to complete because of a couple avoidable errors? And that one of those mistakes alone led to an additional six hours of touch-ups. With plenty of previous videos on our channel showcasing the use of vinyl stencils, and even other designer prints, you might expect this to be a pretty simple task. But doing something as minute as selecting the wrong vinyl for certain materials or laying a stencil incorrectly can derail your whole project. So in this video, I'll help you avoid these pitfalls by sharing my mistakes so that you can create those super crispy designer print customs we're all striving for. Okay, so I'm starting with these military black Jordan 4s as my base shoe. These feature a nice white tumbled leather on the uppers and a neutral gray durabuck on the mudguard. Once we get these prepped and ready for paint with light sanding and acetone, we can begin laying in some very simple color blocking similar to the Jordan ones these are modeled after. I always forget just how long Jordan 4s take to paint because there are so many different panels and edges to touch up on these. Next up, we moved into our first stencil with the Dior Wordmark logo, replacing the flight text on the tongue tag. Everything seemed to be going pretty smoothly up to this point. After that, we moved on to the main event and began masking off the rest of the upper, leaving only the Durabuck panel exposed for the Dior monogram. I found that when painting a pattern like this, it's best to start with the color of the individual logos. This would also be considered the positive portion of the stencil. In general, it's going to be so much harder to take the negative portion of a pattern vinyl and stretch that across an uneven surface without distorting it. So I'm going to treat this material like other fabrics and mix some too soft into our paint. I'll then lay down three coats of black with my airbrush and heat set in between to retain some of that factory softness. Now we are just about ready for our stencils in this area. Typically, I'll opt for FDC 3700 glitter vinyl on softer materials like this, rather than the usual Oracle 811 vinyl I use on leather shoes. But I recently went to stock up and noticed that almost all sites were out of stock. As I searched around a bit more, I found a couple places that had the 12 inch rolls available, but never in the typical gold or silver I'm used to seeing. I thought that was a little bit weird, but it should still be the same vinyl. Right? Right? Once that vinyl arrived, it was time to put it to the test. However, as soon as I cut the first print with my Silhouette Cameo, this is where the nightmares began. Right away, I could tell this material was significantly thicker. Every piece I began peeling back required much more effort than usual. Did I perhaps not cut through the material deep enough? I could visibly see all of the cut lines, so that couldn't be the issue. It just didn't have that same pliability or strong adhesive I'm used to with glitter vinyl. Either way, we've got a tight deadline to hit for these and couldn't wait to reorder more vinyl. I figured we could still get it done with some heat setting and other vinyl tricks we've learned along the way. Nevertheless, this Dior print is incredibly tricky to weed since all the letters are interlocked. There's really no large chunks that can be removed at once that span the full pattern. Instead, it mainly consists of small detailed pieces that are within the letters like the D's and O's, plus tiny isolated areas between letter overlaps. This one stencil sheet alone took me 50 minutes to complete, and I have to do two more of them just to have some backup. Given the mudguard has a relatively slim profile on these, I trimmed my sheets to roughly align. This will make it easier to wrap around the surface. Unfortunately, once we started transferring the print onto the panel, it wasn't holding down anywhere near as much as I had expected. Also, not only was getting the vinyl to lie down properly a big issue, but we were then presented with another problem. What do I do with the pattern as the panel starts to curve? Since we're not working on a deconstructed shoe where you can lay one large stencil across a flat panel, we'll have to get creative here. By continuing the same direction of the pattern I've already laid down, it would start to warp as it bent around the front toe. Eventually, it'd be completely sideways or even upside down if I kept stacking. If I wanted to also prioritize keeping the pattern upright on the inside profile, we'd have to find a solution in the middle. 
I chose to extend the design across the toe and then cut it off as it curved inward. Then I was able to lay my print upright on the insides and link together back towards the toe. Here's how the pattern looks when viewing from the inside and front of the shoes. With any print stretched across multiple panels, slicing near the overlaps can help the pattern settle into a flatter position. After that, it's time for a thorough round of heat setting. Then we can seal the stencil by painting a layer of the color underneath as our first coat on top. I'm still using a fabric medium mixed into my paint on these coats. I mixed light gray, putty, avocado, and beige for this kind of gray, kind of beige-ish color. After three to four light coats, it was then time for the most nerve-wracking moment of the entire project, removing the stencil. Right away, literally with my first peel, I could tell I was in trouble. My fears were confirmed the more we peeled back as I knew I was in for a world of hurt. And more importantly, my toothpicks were about to get a serious workout. There were little to no areas of solid black that wouldn't require touch-ups to some degree. This can absolutely demoralize you knowing that you basically have to redo the entire print. However, there was a small glimmer of hope as I removed all the tapes surrounding the designer print panel. I realized just how good this would eventually look once the pattern was complete. I had to spend the next six hours painstakingly touching up just about each and every single letter featured in the monogram. So much can be learned from a project like this, and it's why sneaker customizing is really about problem solving. You're constantly making hard decisions on what order to do things, asking yourself what can go wrong if I do this versus that in different situations. I could have saved myself so much trouble on this project alone just by picking the right materials. Ultimately, I learned that I actually purchased FDC 3710 and FDC 3700 is no longer in production. That product has now become Scissor Easy PSV Vinyl, which I can confirm works and feels exactly the same. I highly recommend it if you're ever stenciling on softer materials. Now, if you enjoyed learning about the blunders I made in this video and want to learn about other mistakes you should avoid that will prevent you from growing on your custom sneaker journey, make sure you check out this video next. All right, guys, everybody get out there and just create.